I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke Wednesday takes on Generation Z and their atheism. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications. Get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Sharing is caring content and donate your tax deductible gift to higher things keeps us making the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults. All right. One of our most popular videos that we do is woke Wednesday. And that is probably because we have none other than Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of higher things. She is the face that runs the place of higher things. And our woke expert, Erica, how you doing? I'm doing well today. How are you? Well, since we're not talking about chest feeding, I could do the I know. I know. I did you a solid today, my friend, and, and made it a little less scary for you. So I have a, I have a question for you. And ready? Yep. I, mm -hmm. I think you probably need to define who Gen Z is. And you also probably need to tell, tell us why they're, they're full of atheism. Which is right. they don't believe in God. So sounds good. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> thank you for that. Uh, so a friend of mine actually sent me an article. Uh, I kind of keep up on Gen Z. I taught Gen Z for a while. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to bring that up today for our topic. Um, so let's start with Generation Z, if you don't know who Gen Z is. It's the generation that's born roughly between the years 1999 and 2015. So, um, and the deal with them is, is that we already know that they're the mo most woke generation, right? They're the most tolerant, um, they kind of, um, they're a very different generation. They're also the largest generation population wise um, uh, ever so far, thus far. So it's a big, big group of um, kids that we're talking about, kids and now adult. Um, so that's, that's the deal. They're known as the first truly post-Christian generation. And um, it goes a little beyond that, we're finding, because of a fairly recent study that came out by Barna. Now, I'm going to have uh, G4 actually link the article that I'm talking about if people want to look into it further uh, for more information. So um, basically, the deal with Gen Z and atheism is that um, we already know that Gen Z does not assert a real strong religious identity. They may talk about spirituality, but they kind of have a really different um, background or starting point than other generations. In other generations, we could kind of assume sort of a general Christian literacy, at least, about what's going on with Christianity, because the majority of folks were Christian or had been raised Christian. Um, so they don't, don't, you can't assume that they even have received a basic education, maybe even on the Bible and Christianity. Now, if you're Gen Z and you're Christian, Clearly, I'm not talking about you. I'm, I'm talking about kind of majority statistics here. Um, so the the uh, Barna wanted to conduct kind of a big study to figure out uh, the culture beliefs and motivations shaping this generation. Um, and what they found is that atheism is on the rise with this generation. And in fact, atheism is no longer or being an atheist is no longer a, like kind of a bad thing. Um, and actually, the percentage of teens who identify um, is double that of the general population. So 13 percent versus 6 percent of all adults. So 13, at least 13 percent of Gen Z is identifying themselves outwardly as atheist. Um, so that's double. Yeah, that's double the, the general population. It's a it's a big rise. Um, so we already knew that Christianity was kind of dropping off from generation to generation, but this is kind of a big jump. Um, so three out of four boomers, for instance, are Protestant or Catholic, um, while just three in five 18, uh, 13 to 18 year olds say they are some sort of Christian. So it's a, it's a, it's a big shift. And that's why we're talking about it today. All right. So um, you mentioned a sort of a major study on Gen Z. What does the study point to concerning the reasons why uh, generation, generation Z folks are going atheist uh, or, or self-proclaiming themselves or self-identifying themselves as atheists? 
and just another chance to blame the boomers. Okay, boomers. <laughs> Thank you. You just wanted to say that, right? We, I, I mean, we could do a woke Wednesday on the term "okay, boomer." I don't, I don't know how, but I don't know. We'll see. We could, we could, we could revisit that. But um, yeah. So what's what's with this kind of falling off with Christianity? So Barna did when they did their study, they asked um, non Christians of all ages about like what are the biggest barriers to faith. Um, and in that, the Gen Z has kind of a lot in common with older generations, but there are a few differences that stand out. Um, teens, the things in common that teens have with especially millennials and some older Americans um, is that they say the problem of evil and suffering is like a big deal breaker for them. Um, so a lot of them, just like in history, we've, we, I think we've heard this a lot, they struggle to find a good reason for the existence of both good and evil. Um, and how can there be a loving God when there's, you know, all that evil? So, um, but interestingly, on the other hand, uh, Gen Z non-believers seem to be less likely than non-Christian adults um, to say that uh, uh, um, the Christian church's hypocrisy is a significant barrier, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, but teens overall are somewhat less uh, incline than U.S. adults to strongly agree that religious people are judgmental. So it's not exactly that issue. Uh, more than one third of Gen Z, that's 37 percent, believe it is not possible to know for sure if God is real compared to 32 percent of all adults. So they're quite skeptical about, you know, being uh, believing in the existence of God. Um more than half of all Americans, both teens and adults, agree with the statement many relig religions can lead to eternal life. There's no one true religion. So there's this idea of that relativism, right? What, right, what might be right for me is not right for you. You find your own way to God. That kind of spiritual, not religious is definitely woven in there in this, in this study. Um, uh, the, nearly half of all teens are a lot like millennials or when they survey millennials and say, I need some sort of factual ev evidence to support my beliefs. That's 46% of them. So um, they also uncovered kind of an uneasiness with the relationship be between science and the Bible. So significantly fewer teens and young adults, um, that's 28 and 25% Gen X and boomers, um, see them more as complementary if that makes sense. So they really find that science and faith are kind of incompatible um, and they don't feel that the church fully explains it. Now, interestingly enough, Gen Z has a general positive view of church, although fewer of them attend. So more than half of Gen Z say church involvement is either not too or not at all important. Um, only one in five says that attending church is very important to them. Um, and as I said before, the other big shtick is half of all church going teens. Now, these are church going teens say the church seems to reject much of what science tells us about the world. So there's that disconnect there, even with the church going. Um, so and they also just don't see a compelling reason in general to just be involved in church. Um, so uh, and then additionally, in, um, about three out of five Christian teens say I find God elsewhere. That's sixty-one percent of church-going teens um, say I, I can find God sort of anywhere. So it's sort of an interesting um, look at Gen Z. It's different. They share some commonalities with other unbelievers, um, and even those that go to church are expressing some interesting opinions. So um, now it's my turn to ask you, Pastor Borkhart, what is your what is the kind of takeaway on this? Um, I think anyone who uh, is a Christian is concerned by it because they see our children kind of leaving the faith and not feeling a compelling reason. But what are your thoughts on, or what do you see specifically on sort of this fall of Gen Z away from the faith? I think that uh, I, first and foremost, we have to sort of differentiate between those who've never heard about the faith and right. those who have heard about the faith. Those who have never heard about the faith, um, that's disturbing. Uh, we've made mention to a couple of times the Christmas card that I saw from 1950 with new, the New York skyline 
filled with crosses in the windows and how mm-hmm. that wouldn't happen today. And so yeah. as we sort of uh, – woke, wokeism is basically American. And so as we sort of see our country becoming more and more anti-God, anti-Christian, more specifically. Anti-organized, I think, God. I and mean, that, there's and, even – yeah. but, but that organization is Christian. Correct. Um, yeah. uh, we see – so that, that is one, one thing that we need to be, we, we need to be aware of. Uh, this ain't your grandparents' country anymore. Um, this is a different United States than before. And I think uh, the last election showed a lot of Christians that. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the flip side, we I'm going to do two things. I'm going to say something, and then I'm going to do a shameless plug. You ready? Okay. The, 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 thing to, the, the thing to sort of take in by this is we need to catechize our kids better. We need to we need to to teach them better the faith. We need to understand that the, what they may be learning in public school may be antithetical about what than what we are learning in in their learning here. We also need to be aware of the fact that sometimes um, the simplicity of the Bible says it, so I believe it. That's it. Probably isn't that effective. Uh, the circular argument of of I believe the Bible is the word of God. Um, I believe it because the Bible says it's the word of God, and therefore I believe it. We're going to have to get past that. We're going to have to get past teaching Sunday school lessons like they're like Sunday school, like they're there's just like a myth. Like you've got Santa, you got the Easter bunny, and oh, by the way, you got JC. Um, and we do that a lot where we just sort of, there's no differentiation, no separation between the myths that we teach our children that we're having fun with them, and there's nothing wrong with those myths. And the um, and the reality of the Christian faith. This isn't Santa Claus. Christ actually lived and died for us. Um, and that's why I think here comes the shameless plug. Organizations like Higher Things, who are all about passing on the faith to the next generation, the, to making the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults, are so important. Um, this wasn't intended to be an advertisement for Higher Things, but it needs to be. Because um, we need to replace stock Sunday school lessons with with apologetics. We need to not just teach that God created the heavens and the earth. We need to go head to head against what they're doing. And we need to challenge kids, especially high school kids, who come to church and read the Genesis account, which in and of itself is hard, and then go to school and hear that the Genesis account is bunk. You know, we need, to, we need to understand that, that science actually doesn't disprove the scriptures. It actually supports what we believe, and that what we believe is actually sensible, to quote John Warwick Montgomery. And so I think that there, there, is, there is a place here for a call to repentance for the church who has turned over their kids to the public schools to teach them about reading, writing, and arithmetic and not double down on the historicity and certainty of the faith um, and we're paying the price for it. So we were ready to fight the fight for abortion, and we won the fight for an abortion. Gen Z believes that abortion is wrong, for the most part. That's true, yep. But we did not fight for Jesus. How much of a distraction is that? In the midst of all of that, how clever the devil is, we turned our kids over, we taught them that abortion was wrong, we didn't teach them how to defend their faith. And so the first college professor that says, oh, you believe that God created the heavens and the earth? <laughs> they buckle under the, uh, the, 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 the weight of that. Now we've reached 14 minutes, so I'm going to let you have the final word, and then I'll round the episode out. I actually, I actually just kind of want to mostly high-five what you said. Um, the only thing I would do at this point is I just want to ask for clarification on one tiny point, and that is... You are not saying that that parents who have turned who have sent their kids to public school have done some sort of evil, correct? Like I just I just want to get that out there, right? Because no, I, I, I know you, I know that's not what you're saying, but I don't want to have anybody get the impression that like your kids going to public school, you got to pull them right now. So right? Before you send the four page single space letter, right, right, right. I just want to avoid. Um, you're my, you're my friend, so I don't want anybody my, yelling at you too my, much. My deal here is I've seen this in my own kids. Yeah. Me too. That's my, yeah. So I'm calling myself to repentance. I'm not saying that homeschooling is better than 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 public school. I'm saying that that if the state is godless, 
then the school is godless, or at least pan religion. So uh, uh, it's something we have we talked about with prayer in schools. That just because we get prayer in school does not mean it's necessarily a good thing because the, the state doesn't care about G O D or A L L A H or B U D D A. I don't know what you're spelling. Buddha. Like, oh, Buddha. Oh, Buddha. Oh, B. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, it. so it doesn't care. Pardon my, my 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 linguistic problems. It doesn't care. And so we, we, we handed our kids over to what we thought was a Christian environment because we were raised in a Christian environment and the world changed. And so I'm not saying that pull your kids out of public school. I'm saying supplement it with really good parenting combined with a really good church. All right. I think in that order is great because um, it doesn't start with the church teaching the kids. It starts with parents teaching the kids and the church resources the parents teaching the kids. That's what Higher Things does. We teach parents and pastors to promote good Christianity in their kids. And then the kids uh, learn the faith. Does that make sense? 100%. Thank right. you for the clarification. Erica Jacoby on a 16-minute episode is the executive director of Higher Things. I blame her. Don't blame me. Uh, Higher Things uh, is the executive director of Higher Things. She is also our woke expert. Erica, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, that's, that was the Bible, not me. Teach your kids the faith. Teach them. Teach your kids the faith. Teach them. Re trust, tell your pastor to teach the kids the faith. Tell your, your elders to teach the kids the faith. Because the only way out of this mess is the faith of Jesus, drawn from the scriptures and found in the small catechism. I'm Pastor George Barkhart and Erica Jacoby. And this has been another Higher Things Woke Wednesday video short.